Borley Rectory, just the name sent shivers down spines, a sprawling Victorian house in Essex, England, but this was no ordinary house, for decades, whispers spread, whispers of cold spots, ghostly figures and unexplained noises, it was a place where the veil between our world and the next seemed thin, some dismissed it as folklore, others knew the truth, Borley Rectory was a magnet for the unexplained, the stories began in the 19th century, each tale added to the growing legend. Locals spoke of a phantom coach, a ghostly nun forever wandering the grounds. These were not just stories, they were warnings, warnings of something sinister that lurked within the rectory's walls. The house stood on land steeped in history, a history intertwined with the supernatural. It was said to have been built on the site of a 14th century monastery. Some believed the ghosts were trapped souls, forever bound to the land. Whatever the reason, one thing was certain, Borley Rectory was a place where the dead refused to rest. Over the years the stories grew more frequent, more disturbing. The haunting of Borley Rectory was about to become a legend, a legend that would captivate and terrify England. One figure dominated the tales of Borley Rectory, the nun. Her ghostly form was seen by numerous witnesses, always dressed in grey, her face obscured by a veil. She was a tragic figure, said to be the spirit of a young nun who had fallen in love with a monk from a nearby monastery. Their love was forbidden, their secret discovered. Legend had it that the monk was executed. The nun bricked up alive within the walls of the rectory, her restless spirit a constant reminder of their doomed love. The nun's presence was often accompanied by a feeling of dread, a coldness that permeated the air. Some claimed to hear her mournful cries echoing through the empty halls. Children more sensitive to the supernatural were particularly frightened by her. They would refuse to enter certain rooms, their innocent eyes seeing what others could not. One family, the Smiths, moved out after only a few months, driven away by the nun's constant appearances and the relentless paranormal activity. The nun's story was not just a local legend, it was a tangible presence, a chilling reminder that some sins can never be forgiven, and some souls can never find peace. The nun's ghost was not the only manifestation in the house, Borley Rectory was alive with unexplained phenomena, footsteps echoed in the dead of night, doors slammed shut on their own, disembodied voices whispered from empty rooms, objects moved mysteriously, as if controlled by unseen hands. One resident, the Reverend Guy Eric Smith, reported seeing a ghostly coach and horses thundering past the house. Others witnessed strange lights and shadows dancing in the darkness. The atmosphere within the rectory was heavy with anticipation, as if something was always about to happen. Messages appeared on the walls, seemingly scratched by unseen hands. Help me, one message pleaded. Another simply stated, Marianne, perhaps a clue to the nun's true identity. These messages sent shivers down the spines of even the most skeptical observers. The paranormal activity was relentless. It seemed to emanate from the very fabric of the house, trapping its inhabitants in a terrifying and inescapable nightmare. Section 4. Price's Pursuit of Truth Word of the haunting reached Harry Price, a renowned paranormal investigator. Intrigued, Price arrived at Borley Rectory in 1929, determined to uncover the truth behind the legends. He would spend years investigating documenting every unexplained event. He interviewed witnesses, conducted seances and even set up cameras in an attempt to capture evidence of the supernatural. Price's investigations made Borley Rectory the most famous haunted house in England. His findings were both fascinating and terrifying. He documented phantom footsteps, unexplained temperature drops, and even objects levitating. He believed the house was a focal point for psychic energy, a place where the veil between the living and the dead was thin. Price's work at Borley Rectory was groundbreaking. It helped to legitimize paranormal investigation, but it also brought the haunting to a wider audience, making Borley Rectory synonymous with the supernatural. Section 5, Engulfed in Flames In 1939 tragedy struck. A fire, blamed on faulty wiring, ripped through Borley Rectory, reducing it to a smoldering ruin. The flames seemed to devour the house with an unnatural hunger as if fueled by some unseen force. Some whispered that the fire was no accident, that it was the house's final act of defiance, a way of silencing the spirits within its walls forever. The fire marked the end of an era. Borley Rectory, once a place of fear and fascination was gone, but the stories, the legends, they refused to die. 
Section 6, Echoes in the Ashes. Even in ruins, Borley Rectory continued to fascinate. People claimed to see the ghostly nun wandering amongst the rubble. Others reported strange lights and noises. The land on which the rectory once stood remained a place of mystery, a place where the past refused to stay buried. The story of Borley Rectory serves as a chilling reminder, a reminder that some places are forever marked by the past, haunted by the echoes of what once was. The nun, the phantom coach, the unexplained phenomena, they all contribute to the legend. Borley Rectory may be gone but its story lives on, a testament to the enduring power of the supernatural.